In today's session, we're going to be talking about an introduction to the variety of basins. The ones we'll be looking at are wall-hung basins. Included in that would also be the various pedestals that can work with it. Uh, we'll look at a countertop, undermount, drop-in, semi-drop-in, corner basins, recessed basins, and we'll also look at a butler sink. And we'll follow that by looking at some brackets and bolts and other fixations, pedestals, overflow holes, waste fittings required, the tap different tap hole sizes, a uh, tap hole stopper, and we'll look at a tap hole punch-in procedure. If we have a look at wall-hung basins, which include in that a full pedestal as well as a half pedestal. The installation of the basin is exactly the same in all three applications where you bolt it to the wall using two 10 mm fixing bolts and you would then attach the half pedestal onto, directly onto the wall underneath the basin and that comes with its own fixing set as well. If you don't require a pedestal, you could just use a bottle trap or otherwise just a standard rubber P-trap. An option for this particular basin, which is a springbuck basin, is you can use two semi-concealed cast iron brackets. Uh, this one is an older method of installation, which has been replaced by the fixing bolts but there are certain basins that still require this installation. There are some basins that you can either be surface mounted or wall hung. One of them is the emerald basin where you would use those two fixing bolts to attach the basin to the wall. What we recommend is the use of an emerald uh, bracket because of the distance from the wall to the front, which is 500 millimeters for this basin, we would recommend the use of a waste support bracket as the one that's depicted there. Alternatively, it can be fitted directly onto a surface without any brackets. The other basins, we have got the same application where it can be wall mounted or it can be surface, surface mounted. This application is exactly the same where you would fix it to the wall with the two fixing bolts and the alternative in this case is to use a weaver stroke solar um, waste support bracket. Alternatively, it can be surface mounted. In this case, we've got three basins. It's, it's the weaver family, which is the weaver, the midi weaver, and the mini weaver. Then you've got quite a wide variety of countertop or surface mounted basins. Some of them have got tap holes and others do not have tap holes where the, you would use an under tile uh, mixer or you would have a surface mounted uh, mixer which would ne need to be an extended one. You've also got two other options where you've got a countertop or a drop-in basin. In this case, it's the Jade Art Basin, where most of the time it's used as a drop-in basin, but you have got the option of using it as a countertop basin as well. And you've got undermount basins. There's four of them where you've got one oval basin, which is the standard one, the President Basin, and you've also got three rectangular basins. Now, these four basins all use exactly the same brackets to uh, attach it to the underside of a surface. Just a note, if you do have a, a marble or a granite slab, do not screw this bracket directly into the slab. You would need to put a piece of plywood that you attach onto the underside of the slab, and you attach this bracket um, onto that. Don't drill directly into it because you're running the risk of it cracking. Then you've got drop-in basins where it's just a cutout in the surface and the basin drops directly into it. This used to be the highest um, 
volume of product in the residential market that's now moved across to there's a higher portion of surface mounted basins now but we still have this range of drop-in basins you see also just like we've got with the um, surface mounted basins you've got some of them with the tapple and some without you've got the cameo basin on the far left that's got three semi-punch tapples so you've got the option there of one or zero, one, two, or three tapples. Whereas you look at the Concord drop-in basin in the top right, that is the only option you've got there is a single tapple. You have got the option here of using two of those drop-in basins as undermount basins as well. The images don't depict it in the undermount application, but they've both got a a flat surface around the edge so that can be mounted underneath the vanity slab. The cameo basin would be installed where the tap is attached, uh, tap, tap is fixed, uh, the tap hole is on the basin and that is inside the cutout. So that was a very convenient method for a um, an office block and that was an architect's suggestion to do that. The iceberg has been used in a couple of applications as an un undermount basin. The semi drop in basin is used predominantly where you've got a space constraint, but you still require the use of a vanity slab and a cupboard underneath the basin. What this one does, it protrudes over the front of the vanity slab and uh, can fit into a fairly compact area. There's two different sizes which is the Azalea 510 which is on the right and the Azalea 540 which is on the left. You've got corner basins, this particular one the kite basin is uh, supplied with two, not supplied with that's uh, you've uh, you would source it separately or you would spec it separately. Uh, two wall hanger brackets. The two hanger brackets are fixed on 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 the two um, walls uh, going into the corner, and the basin would would slide down onto those brackets. The other option is the emerald corner basin, which is a surface mounted basin, or it can be wall mounted. If it were to be wall mounted, you would not use the same brackets as you would use on the kite basin. You would use uh, two 10 millimeter fixing bolts. Then you've got a recessed basin. This is where you've got an extremely uh, space sensitive area and the uh, the requirements of this is it can fit into a guest bathroom where the bathroom is just the width of a door because it only protrudes 155 millimeters from the wall. It does need to be recessed inside the wall though, but it is a very compact basin for that guest loo application. Then you've got a butler sink. This one over here is the James butler sink. And it is available with a basket strainer waste, which is a 90 millimeter. And um, this one is the, which is the standard size hole for a butler sink. Just be careful that the strainer supplied by Frankie does not work with this because the thread is too short. So it will work with the stainless steel, but not with the thicker ceramic sink. So just be wary of not using the Frankie strainer. you'll see a schedule of the compatibility a compatibility matrix between the basin brackets as well as the pedestals together with the basins so you'll see that the biggest volume product or the 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 the, the bracket that's used with most of the products is that 8448ZO which is a 10 millimeter fixing bolt and that's used with the majority of the basins You'll see the pedestals, the bulk of them can be used with a, with a pedestal, except the smaller ones like the, like the Bantam Basin and the Emerald Basin, which, uh, which is that surface mounted basin as well as a wall hung basin, that will not work with a pedestal. Here you've got the underslung basins and the corner basins just uh, add on to the back 
of or, and onto the bottom of that previous schedule. There's two different tepal sizes. The center tepal is larger than the two side tepals. The reason for that is because you've got your hot and cold water inlets, so you require a little bit more space. So the size of that tepal is 35 millimeters. There's a tolerance of plus two or minus one. So the size, if it's, if it's within spec, must range between 34 and 37 millimeters for the mixer to be able to fit. Whereas the two side tepals, are 30 millimeters between 30 millimeters and 32 and then you've got uh, pillar taps that are used um, on the left and the right hand side of the basin if we have a look at the overflows there's two different size overflow holes okay you've got uh, this one over here the size of the hole is 19 millimeters and the external size of that of that ring is 25 millimeters and this will work with the majority of the locally produced products you will see that little schedule on on the right where it's got how many tepals each of those basins uh, will take as well as the size of the overflow hole then there's a slightly bigger one which is this is predominantly the offshore products where it's instead of 19 millimeter overflow hole you've got a 23 millimeter overflow hole and the size of that fascia instead of 25 millimeters it's 30 millimeters and the bulk of that you'll see it's either a one tepal or a zero tepal okay this is a continuation on the previous slide and this is for basins that do not have an overflow so you'll see there the um, basins where it'll show that it's got one tepal no tepal or one two or three semi punch tepals but all of them do not have an overflow an option you got over here the cameo basin comes standard without an overflow um, there's no integrated overflow but there is an overflow attachment that you can have what you must remember is when placing the order you need to place an order for this cameo overflow um, together with the order to make sure that a hole in the basin is drilled before it is sent out the basin is uh, the basin is drilled and this attachment is supplied together with it That is the cover that we spoke about earlier. This particular basin does have an overflow hole. If you don't require an overflow hole, you can have that cover, which would then seal it. We do have had a couple of requests for some basins without an overflow. This is the one way that we can do it a lot easier. The different wastes that are required every time you've got there is an overflow hole you must supply a slotted basin waste so these are the different options that we have got uh, of slotted basin wastes that must be used wherever there's an overflow where there's no overflow you must use an unslotted basin waste and then you've got some options um, of those The tapal stopper, that is if you do not require a tapal, you can use a tapal stopper, which is just covers the tapal, just by putting a thin layer of silicon around the underside of the tapal, you would then um, attach that onto the basin and will cover the cover the tapal. You'll see the dimension of it is 40 millimeters, which is bigger than what we said earlier, the size of a tapal of a center tapal is 35 millimeters and a smaller tapal is 30 millimeters 30 to 32 millimeters so this will work with any of those tapals this tapal stopper is also used as um, part of uh, supplied standard with a waterless urinal where it is used to cover up the spreader hole so this one is used in the uh, sweet pea as well as the levatera and now the flat back because we modified this tap off stopper so it'll fit into into the flat back as well 
that's just an example of what it looks like before and after the top image just shows the tap hole stopper next to the tap hole and the second image is the tap hole stopper which is covering the tap hole now if we look at the basin tap hole punching procedure very important that your merchants know exactly how this is punched out so when their plumbers come to buy the basin they can assist them with uh, knocking it out what re what's required if you have a look at uh, uh, number one there it shows the underside of the basin now what a mistake that a lot of people make is that you knock the tap hole out from the underside because it's nice and clear so you can hit it from the from the underside but that's going to cause a crack in the basin so what you must do is if you look at number two that is the starting point in, in knocking knocking this out you first locate the position of the of the tap hole top and bottom and you'll see in the image we're going to show just now or the video we're going to show we use we use magnets to locate the position of that hole exactly you then mark mark it and you then proceed to knock it out with a hammer making sure that your finger is underneath the tap hole that you are knocking to reduce the stress that the basin goes through when you knock it out once you've knocked a hole through uh, through there you turn the hammer around and you neaten the edges to get a nice neat finish okay now we're going to have a look at the um, incorrect procedure This is the incorrect procedure on how to knock out a tap hole. We're removing tap holes on a basin. We're going to show you the incorrect way and the correct way of doing it. First, you put on your glasses. Okay? Take the basin, turn it around. This is for the incorrect way. I'll take a hammer. The result of that is the basin are breaking out like this. Now we'll have a look at the correct way. Now I'm going to show you the correct way of removing the tap hole from my biscuit's basin. Take two magnets, one at the bottom, one on top, where they join. I make my mark. I can even go a little bit bigger with it if I want to. Okay, this is the tools that you require to be able to do an effective um, tap hole, uh, to, 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 to do the tap hole punching procedure effectively. You'll see there's a pair of magnets, a solid magnet and a ring magnet. You've got a pair of goggles and you've got a hammer. That's a specially made hammer which has got a, um, a center pin on the one side and it's got a ball on the other side. So the center pin is what you initially start knocking the, the tap hole out with and the ball is what you use to, to clean up the edges of the tap hole. Okay, if you have any questions or uncertainties, please can you contact us on that number below. Thank you.